Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today, you should be outraged. Anyone who cares even a little bit about justice, fairness of process, liberty, and the idea that perhaps the people ought to have at least something to do with determining the composition of their government, should be outraged. Because what has happened at the main Republican Party caucus has been the overt public disenfranchisement of 16.3% of the precincts in Maine and the electorate within those precincts, with 83.7% of the precincts reported. The mainstream media have announced a, quote, decisive victory for Mitt Romney, who has currently 39% of the votes, and Ron Paul has 36% of the votes. Of course, the actual vote totals are very small in Maine, so in terms of absolute numbers, Romney leads Paul by fewer than 200 votes. And in the remaining 16.3% of the precincts, particularly in Washington County, the caucuses have been delayed because of terrible weather. They're not going to be held until February 18th. So the votes from those caucuses are not going to be reported right now, but if they were, there is plenty of room there for Ron Paul to come ahead of Mitt Romney, given how few votes actually separate them. But the main GOP has made the official decision and has broadcasted to the public that irrespective of how those votes are going to come out, they're not going to be counted. Mr. Charlie Webster, the chairman of the main GOP, has announced it and has been quoted in mainstream news articles as endorsing this position. This should be an outrage. So some bad weather has happened. Does that mean that Republican voters in these precincts of Maine should just not have their voices count? Now granted, this is just a straw poll. It's not binding on the delegates and what the delegates are going to do in the subsequent rounds of the caucus. Because if you are educated about the caucus process, what happens is each precinct elects its own delegates that then get together at the county conventions and elect delegates to go on to the state convention. And then at the state convention, delegates are elected to go on to the national convention. The proportions of delegates can differ significantly from what the straw polls indicate. And indeed, this is definitely a state where Ron Paul is going to get the majority of delegates, because he has gotten the highest percentage of the popular vote to date in any state, about 36%. So what's very frustrating about this is if in the straw poll, the main GOP had permitted all the votes to count, and the result had not been announced so loudly and trumpeted before the mainstream media until 100% of the precincts were in, in such a close race, then Ron Paul could score a major publicity victory. Right now, Ron Paul could still actually win the main caucuses in the long run, but the main GOP, with this blatant disenfranchisement, will have succeeded in keeping media attention away from him and toward the establishment's presumptive nominee, which they want to foist upon all of us without our consent, Mitt Romney. This is a greater outrage, in my view, than vote fraud. Because at least in vote fraud, the people who commit it feel ashamed of it. They try to hide it. They don't let it see the light of day, because they know that if it were to see the light of day, it would be roundly condemned, it would be prosecuted, and our society would not tolerate it. This is much more blatant, more cavalier, more overt. They don't care anymore about fairness. They don't care anymore about actually giving all of their voters, all of their party members, many of whom I'm sure have been quite loyal to the Republican Party, the opportunity to have their voice mean something. They don't care. They have their own agenda. They have their own presumptive nominee. They want to push him onto the rest of us.
and they don't like Ron Paul because Ron Paul challenges their preconceived agenda. I do not think we, who still respect the American founding tradition of having a representative republic, not an oligarchy, should stand for this. We should not tolerate it. We should loudly voice our displeasure and our outrage. Please, write letters to the main GOP. Speak to people about this outrage. Communicate how you believe that this is a monstrous departure from the principle that in the U.S. electoral system, a person's vote ought to count. Please, let people know. The more people know, the more people are aware of this heinous decision, the more likely it is that the main GOP will cave in under pressure. The response from the main GOP and from individuals who very unfortunately might endorse that decision would be, well, the GOP is technically a private organization. It's not part of the government, therefore it can set its own rules, and its own rules don't have to match up with the principles of the American electoral system. I say that argument rings hollow for several reasons. First of all, the Republican Party, through, of course, decades-long dominance in the electoral system, along with its sister party, the Democratic Party, has been able to set the rules for the electoral system such that the two main parties in the United States have been artificially privileged through barriers to entry put in for the third parties. So it's not that they're purely private organizations. They are, for all practical purposes, half of the government. And furthermore, they have set up the electoral system in such a manner as to artificially benefit themselves. So they're not a pure market entity. They're very much a politically linked entity. In fact, an entity with an explicit political purpose to get people elected into office. So the same rules that would apply, for instance, to a privately run business that just sells products or services to people wouldn't apply to the Republican Party. If the Republican Party wants to have the kind of political prominence that it does, then it needs to follow the rules that are applicable to political entities. And these rules are not just rules that the Republican Party might write for itself. They're generally recognized rules of a fair, open, transparent electoral system. A system where if a person votes, and if a person is acknowledged as having the right to vote, then that person's vote has to count, irrespective of which way that person votes, and irrespective of whether the establishment or the party likes the way that person votes. This is not just a matter of outrage for Ron Paul supporters. No matter whom you support, even if you support Mitt Romney, or if you're a Democrat, or if you are a non-voter altogether, or if you are an independent, you should be outraged by this because this is blatant disenfranchisement. And one more thing that I will say to those people who will still contend that the GOP as a private entity can set its own rules is that by that argument, it would follow that our electoral system has been co-opted by well-connected private entities that can disenfranchise anybody they wish to the moment it becomes convenient for them or embarrassing for them if they do not. What has this come to? Because ultimately, in the main election, many people, unfortunately, fall to the lesser of two evils mindset, the idea that, well, we'll vote for the Republican candidate because the Democrat is worse, or we'll vote for the Democrat because the Republican is worse, when in fact the two are so close together, because the nomination process within the parties guarantees that each nominee reflects the wishes of the reigning establishment, this warfare-welfare paradigm that threatens to engulf all of our livelihoods and many of our lives if 
the blatant overseas interventions of the U.S. federal government continue. This needs to stop, and Ron Paul wants to stop it. That's why the establishment doesn't like him, and that's why the establishment will use every tool available in order to prevent him from doing well in the eyes of the media and in the eyes of the public. Ron Paul is going to win the main caucuses, ladies and gentlemen, just as he's been doing very well in amassing delegates in other caucus states, such as Minnesota, where he also came in second in the straw poll, by the way, or Colorado, where despite Santorum's win of the popular vote, many of the precincts actually have 100% Ron Paul delegates, or my own state of Nevada, where although the delegates are pledged for the first round of the national convention to vote for candidates in proportion to the popular vote, after the second round, and during the second round, they're free to vote for whomever they wish. And you know what? This is going to be a brokered convention, because no one candidate is going to have a clear majority of delegates. So as a result, Ron Paul is going to have many, many more delegates than the mainstream media are showing you right now. But this is a calculated move on the part of the GOP establishment and the mainstream media. It's a calculated move because they want you to think that Ron Paul is doing much more poorly than he actually is. Well, let's not let them. This is why it's so important to count these remaining 16.3% of the precincts, the precincts in Washington County, in Maine, which comprise 98 out of the 600 total precincts. Please, let us speak out and let us bring enough public opinion to bear on this matter so that the Maine GOP will have no choice but to reverse its decision. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.